Good morning, everybody. It's lovely to see you. Welcome today. Welcome to those who are here visiting or the first time. It's great to have you with us. Welcome to those who've come for the baptism. Um, we hope that you really enjoy uh, our service together today as we uh, meet with God. I'm Mark. I'm on the team here and I'm leading with... My name's Lindsay and I'm also part of the team here and it's really lovely to have such a full church today right in the middle of August, isn't it? So we are going to begin by worshipping, but let me just read to you a little bit from Isaiah. It says this, Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And a bit later on, he says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. And why don't we pray as we begin. Father, we thank you that you call us to seek you, that you are near, that you're right here and that you call us through our worship to seek you, to be with you, and to find you. Lord, help us now to do that as we worship you. Amen. Let's sing and worship together. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. You never change, you never fail, oh God. And true are your promises. True are your promises. You never change, you never fail, oh God. So we raise up holy hands to praise the Holy One who was and is and is to come. your love and grace. You never change, you never fail, oh God. Oh, why does your love and grace we say? Why does your love and grace? Oh, why does your love and grace? Yeah. You never change, you never fail, oh You were, 
Someone together to any children who'd like to come up at the front and join them. We'd love that so much. Come and join us. Ready? My 
God's the king of the giants. My God's the king of the lions. My God's the king of the creatures of the deep. My God's the king of me. My God. My God's the king of the giants. My God's the king of the lions. My God's the king of the creatures of the deep. My God's the king of me. Have you heard the story about my friend? Let the giant stand in his way He said, hand me my sling, cause it's not that tall oh, My God is bigger and I watch him fall My God's the king of the giants My God's the king of the lions My God's the king of the creatures of the deep My God's the king of me Yes, my God's the king of the giants Lions, my God's the king of the creatures of the deep, my God's the king of me. Have you heard the one about this guy called Dan? Cause he was a mighty holy praying man. He said, throw him to the den of the scary beast. For God saved the hero from the lion's deep. My God's the king of the giants, my God's the king of the lions, my God's the king of the creatures of the deep, my God's the king of me, yes, my God's the king of the giants, my God's the king of the lions, my God's the king of the creatures of the deep, my God's the king of me. Children, you can stay there if you like. We have got a baptism this morning, so why don't you sit where you are, and then you'll be able to see. Can I ask parents, Chris, Lindsay, and can I ask godparents to come up and join us? We are baptizing Elijah today. Well done. You're going to come and stand around here, facing the church. Well done. Yeah. That's right. You can stay with mummy and daddy. Don't worry, Elijah. Here we go. Okay, there are some words for parents and godparents. There are some words for all of us to respond to. And um, in baptism, what we're doing is we're baptizing a child because of a parent's faith. And what we pray is that that child will take on that faith for themselves later in life. That's our prayerful journey. And so it's really important that we as a church family, and there is a commitment to us as a church, that we will pray for and support and encourage our children in their faith, which is why we focus on and have a, a real encouragement for young people in this church. So uh, if we're able to, grab, if we're able to get the liturgy up, that would be great. Thank you. Faith is the gift of God to his people. In baptism, the Lord is adding to our number those whom he is calling. So people of God, will you welcome Elijah and uphold him in his life in Christ? With the help of God, we will. Parents and Godparents, in baptism, God calls us out of darkness into his marvelous light. To follow Christ means dying to sin and rising to new life with him. Therefore, I ask you, do you reject the devil and all rebellion against God? Do you renounce the deceit and corruption of evil? Do you repent of sins that separate us from God and a neighbor? Do you turn to Christ as Savior? Do you submit to Christ as Lord? And do you come to Christ, the way, the truth, and the life? Elijah, Christ claims you for his own. Receive the sign of the cross, my friend. I don't bite, I promise. Receive the sign of the cross. Never be ashamed to confess the faith of Christ crucified. We pray together. Fight valiantly as a disciple of Christ against sin, the world, and the devil, and remain faithful to Christ to the end of your life. Amen. 
I'm going to ask a question. Children, who remembers the story in the Bible where the people of God walked through a sea? Who remembers that? Who was, which, who, who was it who led the people then? Anybody know? Moses. Moses. That's a great answer. Moses did. And so this is all about... This is all about the story that we use some liturgy here that talks about God saving people through water. And what, we, what the water of baptism signifies is a going down to death in an old life and a rising to a new life in Christ as they were led out of a time of slavery to freedom in a promised land. So there's some responses for us all. Praise God who made heaven and earth who keeps his promise forever. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you, almighty God, for the gift of water to sustain, refresh, and cleanse all life. Over water, the Holy Spirit moved at the beginning of creation. Through water, you led the children of Israel from slavery in Egypt to freedom in the promised land. Now bless this water by the power of your spirit that renewed in your image, Elijah may walk in the light of faith and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Lord. Amen. And I ask us together to confess our faith. Do you believe and trust in God the Father Almighty? I believe and trust in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe and trust in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. And do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe and trust in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Okay, now, Elijah, are you going to come with Daddy? Can we do this? Now, if he holds you so that your head's here, otherwise I'm going to get his shirt very wet. What do you think? Would that be okay? No, we'll get his shirt wet. We don't mind. Okay. Elijah. Hey, fella. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son, and because it's his dad's shirt, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Here, Elijah. You better dry yourself. There's a cloth. Well done. Well done. (coughs) Elijah, God has received you by baptism into his church. We pray together. We welcome you into the Lord's family. We are members together of the body of Christ. We are children of the same Heavenly Father. We are inheritors together of the kingdom of God. We welcome you. Let's give him a welcome. Fantastic. I love that. Now then, children are going to their groups. Rebecca, Cara, and one of you, would you like to come and tell me where they're going? Where are children going today? Children who usually go to Beamers, Sparklers, and Shiners are in the preschool of so the So what age is that? Okay. Under fives. Under fives. And if you're over five and you usually go to Crackers or Lasers or Voltage, you're upstairs in the balcony room. Okay, so under fives over the road. Over fives upstairs in the balcony room. Father, bless our children and young people as they go to their groups that they would know something of your goodness today. Amen. Let's stand to worship together. Father, oh God, my home, 
This house of healing, this place of hope, where I forsaken, I'm now returning. Simple devotion is your desire. Here I surrender to find the fire. You are my passion, I'm now returning. I return to you, you're the one I love. Jesus, you alone. My greatest love, my heart, my soul, my mind, my all. I'll give you all my love. I'll give you all my worship. For this communion. You chose the cross for my rebellion, unbroken love. Heaven was calling, I'm now returning. Yes, I return to you, you're the one I My heart, my soul, my mind, my all. I give you all my love. I'll give you all my worship. I search the world, I've seen enough to know there's nothing like the soul. Just as we remain standing, let's hold our hearts still and lift our prayers to our Heavenly Father. Father, there are so many different places in this world that are in pain. There's conflict and division. There's refugees because of climate change. There's refugees because of war. Lord, the, the issues of the world are so momentous, so huge. In a sense, we don't know what to do, therefore we lift them to you now. We say, Lord, into those places of brokenness and hurt and pain, would you come? Where there's division and conflict, would you bring peace? Where there's misunderstanding and miscommunication, would you bring clarity? And Lord, where people have fled from their homes because of conflict, we pray enable a route back that they might be able to rebuild their lives in the community that they grew, grew up in and love and know. So Lord, we lift to you the, the, the ne greater needs of this world. 
Lord, we, we lift to you our nation. We, we especially pray at the moment for so much discontent amongst different people with a rail strike and now, now a strike at the um, freight port and so many other things. Lord, there's, there's lots of discontent that's rolling out. Lord, would you help us as a nation to find a place of uh, new beginnings, a place of contentment? Would you help us as a nation to work well together, Lord, to rebuild this nation for the future? And would you help us as a nation, Lord, to be a nation that seeks to bring justice and peace around the world? Would you help us as a nation to give of the resources that we have and be generous to those most in need and those places that are most broken? And Lord, in the light of that, we do pray, whatever our political leanings, we pray for the next Prime Minister, we pray for this debate that's going on at the moment between um, uh, Liz Truss and Rishi Shunak and and all those who are going to be voting for the next leader. Lord, we pray for your wisdom and guidance in their lives. And then, Lord, we pray for ourselves. Into a world where there's conflict and misunderstandings and hurt, Lord, we pray for our own lives. Pray for our relationships and our health. We pray for the way in which we can support one another and we pray, Lord, for peace in our lives and peace in our relationships and peace, Lord, in, 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 in the way in which we live and seek to bring life and light to others. Help us to be those who make this world better because we exist. Help us to be those who contribute and seek to bring hope and love and healing. Help us to be those who bring clarity and gentleness to this world. Lord, would you help us as a nation to be a nation that really does play our part in the greater world stage, to be a place of hope, and healing and help to others. And Lord, we lift you our personal prayers. We lift you our relationships, our children, our parents, our, 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 our anxieties and concerns, our own health and worries, those that we carry in our hearts around us. We pray, Lord, hear those private prayers. You know what's on our heart. Hear those prayers, Lord. Hear from heaven and help us, Lord, by your spirit, we pray. And all these prayers we lift together in the name of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Why don't you just turn and say hi to those around you. Greet someone this morning that you haven't greeted before. (laughs) Say, Say hello to someone new. Okay, let's regather. Thanks, everybody. Last week it was, um, I think it was last week. Last week, um, 
Chris announced the uh, appointment of our new youth pastor, Phil Avery. Would you like to stand up at the back so we can see who you, there you go. We love you, Phil. Phil's been volunteering in the youth work here, I don't know, probably for 20 years. You've been an amazing guy over so many years, and we are so excited to have you on team and all that you bring. So thank you for saying yes to that appointment. And we've got a few things that we want to announce, haven't we now? Yeah, I'm first, sorry. To the church. Um, so next, 25th of September. 25th of September at the 6.30 service is our next full immersion baptism service. If you have been considering full immersion baptism, please get in touch with Chris or Tim. Very simple, chris at simplezealing.com, tim at simplezealing.com. They would love to hear from you. Or if you know somebody else who's interested in full immersion baptism, get in touch with them so that they can talk to them. Sunday, 25th of September, great Sunday evening celebration. And next is apologies to, for those who aren't regulars here, but if you are a regular here, you'll know that Mark and I are going to be moving on, leaving uh, St. Paul's and moving from Ealing in the middle of September. And very kindly, it seems that the church are putting on a party for us, which is going to be lovely, a lovely opportunity to celebrate and to talk with all of you and have a, a bit of a, yeah, a bit of a goodbye. So that's going to be on Saturday the 10th of September at 8 o'clock in the evening. Um, I understand that it's expected that quite a lot of people will come so apparently you have to get a ticket for this event it feels a bit weird for me to be doing this notice I'm gonna be honest but it would be weird for Mark too so um, you have to get a ticket uh, you don't have to pay for your ticket but you need a ticket because um, it seems that lots of people might come um, and you can do that by going on the website and checking out how to get your ticket and uh, then on our final Sunday which is Sunday the 18th of September we're going to be just having morning services that day no evening service. Um, so come along in the morning and bring a picnic. And after the 11 o'clock service, we'll be sharing food together. And again, a lovely opportunity for us to chat to, to, to some of you and to say our goodbyes or our au revoirs, let's put it like that. <laughs> yeah. And um, uh, last week, I was advertising a book, How to Hear God. I got some more copies of that so that um, anybody who's interested in that could pick it up. They're um, 12 pounds here, they're 15 pounds normally, 12 pounds bargain, you can do it at the back. Um, but I thought this week I'd read you a little extract from it. Turn to this. Um, in, it, in, in this book, basically it's a, uh, Pete Gregg is the leader of 24-7 Prayer and um, it's an amazing organization around the world that are um, uh, leaders in encouraging churches and communities and individuals in prayer and um, he's written several books how, how to pray there's the copies of that at the back God on mute which was an amazing book and the big fat one what was that called dirty, dirty glory. glory well done dirty glory which is brilliant absolutely brilliant um, and this one, equally brilliant. And I have been so inspired by this book, so I thought I'd get some copies. I advertised it last week. But I thought I'd just read you a little extract to give you a, 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 a taste of what's in the book. And now I'm in the pub with David. He's a brilliant young leader I'm mentoring, and I'm trying to work out how to challenge him about his unhealthy intensity without being well too intense and there's a line going round my head about the fruit of the Holy Spirit being joy not intensity but David interrupts my thoughts saying he's got something to discuss with me I say oh me too and he says oh you first then so I take a deep breath and decide to cut to the chase David you need joy in your life he gasps and stares at me. Say that again. I think you need joy in your life. I need joy in my life, yes. He's still staring at me. His mouth is open, but there's no sound. Pete, he says, the thing I'm wanting to discuss is a girl I met online, and I'm wondering if we should date. Well, I'm freaking out now because her name is Joy. <laughs> 
David does indeed get joy in his life. In fact, he marries her, and together they have two beautiful children. They're serving God today on the front line of cross-cultural urban mission. Clearly, sometimes God speaks prophetically in spite of us, and this can be quite a relief. So there gives you a taster. The book is full of that sort of thing. His own journey of allowing the Spirit of God to guide him on a daily basis. And it's not all, yes, everything works. It is absolutely real and honest. It's a great book to read. So if you haven't read a Christian book for a while, um, put down you know, your latest John Grisham or whatever it is you're reading, and, and I encourage you in one of these. So How to Hear God, Pete Gregg, there's about six copies left today. They're 12 quid each, normally 15, absolute bargain. You can do it on a card after the service. Brilliant. I think we're done What's on that. Next? So I'm going to invite Teresa Becker to come and bring us our reading. And then Brie Lustis is going to be speaking to us. So this morning's reading is from Philippians 3, verse 1 to 14. The priceless value of knowing Christ. Whatever happens, my dear brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. I never get tired of telling you these things, and I do it to safeguard your faith. Watch out for those dogs, those people who do evil, those mutilators who say you must be circumcised to be saved. For we, who worship by the Spirit of God, are the ones who are truly circumcised. We rely on what Christ Jesus has done for us. We put no confidence in human effort, though I could have confidence in my own effort, if anyone could. Indeed, if others have reason for confidence in their own efforts, I have even more. I was circumcised when I was eight days old. I'm a pure-blooded citizen of Israel and a member of the tribe of Benjamin, a real Hebrew, if there ever was one. I was a member of the Pharisees who demand the strictest obedience to the Jewish law. I was so zealous that I harshly persecuted the church. And as for righteousness, I obey the law without fault. I once thought these things were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage so that I can gain Christ and become one with him. I no longer count on my own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteous through faith in Christ. For God's way of making us right with himself depends on faith. I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him, sharing in his death, so that one way or another, I will experience the resurrection from the dead. I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things or that I have already reached perfection, but I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead, I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Good morning, everyone. It's great to see you. Um, and welcome to all of you who've never been uh, before and have come for Elijah's baptism. Uh, my name is Bree, and I uh, am a member of this church. I've been coming to this church for about 13 years now. And I am really thankful to be able to share some thoughts with you today on Philippians 3. But before we start, um, why don't we just say a quick prayer together, if that's okay. All right, Heavenly Father, I pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you would be with us this morning. 
um, that you would open our ears and touch our hearts so that we could live here lighter and knowing you a bit more. In your heavenly name we pray. Amen. Right, so yes, I said my name is Bree. Um, I live here, around here, quite locally. I work around here as well. Um, and uh, I don't know what else there is to say about me, really. I've got three boys, three boys, so I am vastly outnumbered at home. <sighs> what can you do? That's just the way life is. Um, so, as you may have caught on from the reading, we are looking at the book of Philippians this uh, sort of summer. I missed the first Sunday because I was camping. Um, but I thought I would just quickly catch you up, because everyone's on holiday, in and out, over the summer. thought maybe I would just sort of give the, the highlights from the, the past two sermons. And actually, I'm just going to get my glass of water, too. Sorry. There we go. I always get a dry mouth when I'm just talking. Lovely. Okay, so, um, so as I said, I missed the first bit of Philippians, but um, chapter two, Chris spoke to us two weeks ago, and he was talking about how everyone is needed in the body of Christ. Like, we're all bringing our past, we're bringing um, the things that we've experienced, we're bringing our gifts, and we're all coming together, and everyone is needed. Everyone's wanted, everyone's needed in the body of Christ. So I thought that was such a great message. So if everyone thinks like, oh, I'm probably not good enough to become a Christian, or possibly um, I'm a bit too weird, or something like that, that's that's not what Philippians is telling us, and that's not what we would want to say. Like, everyone is so welcome and so needed. Not just welcome, but needed in the body of Christ. And then, last week, Mark was preaching, um, and he was preaching on joy. So you probably heard just a little bit about that when Tracer was reading earlier. The first thing um, in our reading today was rejoice, and how joy um, catches, and how we can be a united and a joyful church last week. And do you know, Mark said something that I really loved, and I just wrote it down, so I'm going to try to find it in my notes here. What did he say? Oh yeah, here we are. The Christian life isn't about perspiration, but inspiration. It's not about forcing something to happen, but instead being full of the presence of God. So not only are you needed, but you don't even have to like work really hard once you get into the family of God, because God will fill you with his presence, um, and that will be like great and easy. Well, not always easy, but great. Um, so there we go. I actually think that that's a really good quote to kind of lead us in to our passage today. So why don't we go ahead and get started on Philippians 3? Uh, it was a long passage today, very long passage, um, and we'll be talking about that today as well as the entire Bible. So get ready everyone, we're going to have fun. <laughs> um, so I don't know, you might know that uh, the English Bible has lots of different translations. I personally read the NIV because it's the most holy, no, I'm just kidding, <laughs> really not, because just out of habit, that's the Bible I've got at home, that's the one I use. This morning, Tracer read from the NLT, you might have a different version you read, it doesn't matter at all, really, it's all the Word of God, just read the Bible, it doesn't matter. But in the NIV, um, the heading for today's sermon is, No Confidence in the Flesh. Um, and I personally feel that that title could use a bit of updating, because I don't know what you think of when you hear the word flesh, but I think of like a watermelon or something like that. So it doesn't really mean that much to me, that title. So I would like to propose a new title for Philippians 3, if I can. No offense to the translators of the NIV. Um, but I think that this passage is saying something more like, belonging to God's family isn't based on what you do or who you are. It's all about what Christ Jesus did. And I know that it's unlikely to make it in the Bible as a heading because that is incredibly long. But I think it really gets down to the essence of what Paul is trying to say in that long, long passage that we read this morning. Belonging to God's family isn't based on who you are or what you do or how cool you are or how tall you are or how successful you are. It's all about what Christ Jesus has done for us. And that's straight out of verse three. Verse three says, we rely on what Christ Jesus has done for us. We put no confidence in human effort. Now, um, so Paul, if we can just quickly touch on Paul. Paul spent the very early part of his life trying really, really hard. I don't know if you got that from the passage. Um, Paul is the one who wrote the words that we were reading today, and he spent the first part of his life, yeah, trying really hard to be a perfect Jewish person, absolutely perfect. He wanted to do everything right, and he ended up with his job, um, which was actually, his day job 
was persecuting Christians because he was seen as so holy and so pure that he wanted to get everything that was impure out um, of the Jewish faith. Um, Imagine his surprise, though, when he started to know Jesus and he realized that that race that he was running, trying to gain God's favor, you know, by doing lots of things, was actually totally the wrong race um, because Christ Jesus has already done that for us. And, you know, when I first started to understand this myself, I found it a huge relief. Um, I don't know what your personality is like, but I'm a bit of a trier. Like, I like to try really hard to do things and I like to make things work. Um, Especially in high school, high school's a bit of a funny time for everyone, isn't it? Maybe you guys had a great high school time. Maybe you're thinking back and thinking, oh, that was just the highlight of my life. I can say it was not the highlight of my life personally. Um, I grew up in a small rural Texan town um, where everyone knew everyone and we were different. Our family was different. My dad was from the north of the States, my mum was from Canada, and we were just kind of like the weird family. Um, and I tried really hard to fit in. I really did. I tried really hard to fit in. And I did have friends, and I wasn't like the outcast or something like that, but I just, I, I just didn't fit. Let's be honest, I just didn't fit. And so I tried everything. I think I joined, oh, sorry, sorry for me being too enthusiastic, but I did join every club that was going, really. Let's be honest, I tried theatre. Uh, I tried uh, debate. I tried to join the science team, I did marching band, I did choir, what else did I do? Oh yeah, uh, cheerleading, I mean I just tried anything, literally anything, to fit in. Um, none of it worked, I was still a bit of an oddball in Texas. So imagine my relief when I started to understand that to belong to the family of God, I didn't have to be or do anything, that I was already loved and I was already accepted. Like that is just the best news ever. Now, I would imagine that most of you probably did not grow up in rural Texas. You may have had a good high school time or you might have had a bad high school time. I've got, I've got no idea. I mean, some of you I do because I know some of you, but I don't know. But I think that feeling of not being quite right or that feeling of not quite measuring up, I think that's kind of a universal feeling. It maybe isn't pervasive in your life, it maybe is not something that you feel everywhere you go, but there's likely to be times in your life where you just think, I don't really fit in here. I don't really fit in here. So, I think that this idea of being accepted for who we are and being loved despite what we do is really, really life-changing, actually. I think it's really life-changing. Um, so, luckily for all of us, God does not see things in the same way that we see things. So you don't have to be a high earner or very beautiful or tall, luckily for me, to join the family of God. Everyone is very, very welcome. And actually, God has got a long history from the beginning of the Bible of choosing people who we would kind of see as not quite right for the job. All right? Um, so I'm just going to go through so fast some of those examples. So hold on to your hats. Um, so let's just start with Paul. Paul. Is Paul right to be a Christian? He spent his life persecuting Christians. Would you say, yes or no, is Paul right to be a Christian? No, I would say not. I would say he's not the first person on my mind. Okay, so Paul becomes a Christian. He's like a super Jew, guys. So, if you were gonna send Paul to speak to a group of people, would you send him to the Jewish people who he knows well, he knows how to speak their language, he knows everything about being Jewish, would you send him to go and minister to them or would you send him to the Gentiles who he has spent his entire life avoiding up to this point? Where would you go? Yep, you would go for the Jews, but instead God said you can go to the Gentiles, Paul. All right, and do you know what? It worked out really well. <laughs> Paul was an amazingly strong man of God and his ministry just had so much fruit. So. In my mind, Paul was not the right man for the job, but God saw everything and he was the perfect one for the job that God had. Um, if we just rewind a little bit more, David. David, some of you might even be called David, that's how famous this guy is. Yeah, I've heard a lot about Uncle David. Sorry to single you out, Uncle David. <laughs> uh, Saren is a big fan. Um, and um, so David, probably the most famous king in the Bible, Right? So what happened is before David was the king, Samuel went to David's village to choose the new king. Jesse, David's dad, got all his sons out and lined them up, and they looked great. But he thought that it was so unlikely that David would be chosen. 
he didn't even call David to get in the lineup. Can you believe it? Not only did the world not have confidence in David, David's own dad did not have confidence in him. And yet, that is the man that God chose for the job. Unlikely. All right, fast forward, no, not fast forwarding, rewinding a little bit further. Before David and before the kings, um, there were judges. So God was meant to be the king of Israel, and then we had judges to sort out like the everyday stuff, if that makes sense, not unlike a charity. You know, you've got the board of trustees who are ultimately responsible, that's like God, and then you've got the manager who just actually deals with most of the day-to-day stuff. It was kind of like that arrangement. God was the king, the judges were sorting out the day-to-day stuff. And uh, the Hebrews were having a big problem. In the Bible, it says they were being crushed. They were being crushed, they were being attacked, they were being beaten, and so they prayed for a new judge. Um, And God gave them a new judge, and this judge was absolutely one of the best judges. I mean, absolutely fantastic. Got the job done, um, everything was great. Um, And this person was called Deborah, and she was a woman. Now, I don't know, uh, you, you know, the women in here know that women do still face particular challenges because of our gender, don't we? Things have improved a lot more, but we just, you know, there are still some barriers there. Fast forward like thousands of years, how many barriers do you think were in the place of Deborah to become a judge? So many. Was she society's choice to become the leader of Israel? I'm willing to bet there were some old men grumbling about this. I don't know, it doesn't say it in the Bible, but I bet that there were. But yet, after the Israelites prayed, that was God's answer. Deborah, she's the one. She's not society's choice, she's not human's choice, but she's God's choice. Now I know that this is a lot, I'm just like throwing out stories here and there, but what I really want you to see is that what we see as the perfect Christian, or what you might think of in your mind when you think of the perfect Christian, is not what God is thinking of. God does not have a type. Lindsay told me a funny story, actually, right before we were, um, we were about to start this service, and uh, she told me that she knew someone who look, came into a church, looked around, saw that everyone in the church was wearing navy blue, and thought that if you are a Christian, you must also wear navy blue. There's no such thing. You don't have to wear navy blue. You don't have to be cool. You don't have to be successful. You don't have to be wealthy. You don't have to be poor. None of that stuff is what counts. What counts is what Christ Jesus has done for us. That's what the passage says. I rely on what Christ Jesus has done. I don't rely on my own efforts. Um, Now, I think that it's probably worth mentioning what exactly that is that Christ Jesus has done. Uh, That's the big question in everyone's minds at the moment, isn't it? So what is it that Christ Jesus has done? I'm just gonna take a drink. Um, That is like both the easiest question and also potentially the hardest question to answer in just a couple of minutes because Jesus has done quite a lot of things, really a lot. Um, But I'm not gonna say all of them right now, lucky for you. Uh, So I really thought hard about what I wanted to say, and I think what I want to say is that Christ Jesus just continued what God has done throughout the whole Bible. God has wanted to be with us. God has wanted uh, to have a relationship with us from the very beginning of the Bible, and Jesus just carried that on. So just an example, again, we're gonna go back into the Old Testament. That's like the first bit of the Bible. Moses, you may have heard of him, hopefully, maybe in an RE lesson at some point you heard about this guy. Um, Moses, another very unlikely character, by the way, did not want to do the job that God had for him. God strong-armed him into it, and um, it worked out just fine. But Moses, when he led the Hebrews out of slavery in Egypt, God wanted to be with them so much that he actually, God made himself present in a pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire. I feel like God could very easily have said, well done, Moses, great work. Now get on with it. But instead, God had this deep desire to be with them, and so he was present as they walked through the desert with a pillar of fire uh, in the night and a pillar of cloud in the day. And then after that, God was present with his people in the temples and the tabernacles. You might know about those. Now God is obviously, well maybe it's not obvious, but God is very powerful. Um, And we are maybe not quite as powerful, and we maybe mess up sometimes. I mess up sometimes, we all mess up sometimes. And so, because God is so perfect and powerful and we mess up, they basically had to like cordon off and put some curtains up 
the place where God was most present in the temple. Um, because if you came into direct contact with God's presence, I've, I'm actually quite proud of this. Are you guys ready for this? You would become holy toast. <laughs> you, would, you would drop dead. I'm sorry. That was just my weird stuff. But um, yeah, you would drop dead if you came into contact with God and you weren't like properly prepared. Um, so they cordoned this off with some curtains. People could still encounter God, but they had to stay safe whilst doing it, if that makes sense. So that was the tabernacle and the temple. Um, and then Jesus came to earth. And you know how I said that God wants to get to know us and wants to love us and wants to be with us? Well, Jesus was literally in a body here on this earth, not in England, but on this earth. God had such a desire to be with us that he came as a person, as a baby, grew up um, and lived on this earth for 33 years to show us, literally to show us how God is and who God is. We only unfortunately got 33 years of this. It was cut, well, I don't know if we can say it was cut short, but anyway, at the end of 33 years, it ended because Jesus died on the cross. Um, and when Jesus died on the cross, something, lots of crazy things happened, but I'm just gonna highlight one of the crazy things, is that the curtain in the temple that separated that really, really holy bit from the everybody people normal bit, that split in two. Because at Christ's death on the cross, Jesus provided a way for everyone to walk with God in a closer way than ever before. And that was God's intention from the very beginning. God has wanted to know us. God has wanted to be with us. And it was at that point on the cross that the curtain was opened forever, forever, and God is with us. And now I've totally lost my place. I'm really sorry. <laughs> Here we go. Um, so now I know that it's been a little bit of a quick tour through Moses and Deborah and David and all of them, and you might not remember why they're all important. It doesn't really matter, but I, I really hope that you do remember this, is that there's not a type for God. And in fact, you are his type. You are God's type. Not because you're super cool, but because of what Christ Jesus did, because God wanted to come close to us, and all we have to do is be happy with that, really. So God has come close to us. It's, it's not something you cannot earn your way into the family of God. It's not even possible. Like, how would you even do that? How would you yourself split a curtain in two? That's not even possible. But instead, Christ Jesus has come to us because of his great love for us. You're his type, and he loves you. There's nothing that you can do to, to make him stop loving you. That's already happened. You don't need to earn that love. It's already happened. And that's actually why we can baptize the lovely Elijah today, because Elijah is definitely God's type. God loves Elijah already more than he can possibly imagine. And he can't do anything about that. That's just the way it is. And we are all exactly the same. God loves all of you, and you are exactly his type. I don't know if this is the hundredth time you've heard that message, maybe 500th, or maybe it's the first. But I think no matter what, that truth can still sink down into us more because I think somehow as people we are programmed to try hard, aren't we? Well, I am. I'm definitely programmed to try hard. But I want you to know that you cannot earn this love, this great, great love, this love that sent Jesus to the world, this love that made a path for us to know God and have eternal life. So I wonder if we can just all stand up, if that's all right. Have a quick drink. If you'd like to, if you're comfortable with standing up, it doesn't matter if you don't. And Lindsay's just gonna come up and join me on stage. I just want us to really think about that message of God's great love for us. And the fact that you are already God's type, no matter what you're up to in life, you are God's type. If you'd like to say that you accept that love this morning, for the first time or the hundredth time, that's lovely. And why don't we all just pray together as we do that? If you'd like to join in, you can just join in silently in your own head. Jesus, we thank you for the beauty of your love for us. There is just nothing else like it. And God, I thank you that despite all my trying, you always loved me and you always will. 
And God, I thank you that despite all of our trying as a church, you've always loved us and you always will. Heavenly Father, I pray that this week and always that love would burn bright in all of our hearts, that that knowledge that we're absolutely your type would be present in our minds. God, that we would know your acceptance, and we would know the freedom that comes along with, with that idea of not having to try harder to get yourself into the kingdom of heaven and the family of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you're doing all around this place. And in a moment, we're going to worship. But it may be that for some of you, maybe you've prayed that prayer a long time ago, but you're just needing again to know God's love for you, to know that there's no type, that you fit whoever you are and whatever you do. So during this next worship song, I invite you, if you'd like to, if you want to, Have someone pray for you to know that love again, to know that God loves you, whatever. Then just make your way to the front and someone would love to pray for you. And the other thing I just wonder is whether for some of you there's been something that's getting in the way of you believing that God can love you, that he loves you as you are. It could be anything at all. It might be something from the past, something that's going on in the present. It could be anything. If there is anything that's getting in the way and you would like someone to pray with you for that, then again, I encourage you as we sing this next song, just make your way to the front and someone would love to pray for you. So come, come now as we worship together.
that brings us almost to the end of our service today. Just to say if you are new or visiting today, please don't leave without coming to the welcome desk. We'd love to give you a welcome pack and tell you a little bit more about the church and how you can get involved. We will be serving tea and coffee out the back at the end, so please don't rush off. Stay around to chat to people. And then finally, if you've come to uh, ready to give financially today, there is contactless giving at the back and there are baskets for your cash gifts. Mark, why don't you pray for us? Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for Elijah's baptism. Thank you for the freedom we have to gather as the family of God. Lord, as you've spoken to us, so fill us and help us to go out this week to be um, messengers of that good news, to be those who share love and light and hope and new beginnings with others, to know our, our, our identity in you, and therefore to be confident in who we are in you and your kingdom. And so the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit go before you, your families, your friends and your loved ones, wherever they may be this day and for always. Amen. Amen. See you at the end for a cup of tea, coffee. Uh, do stay. There are um, books at the back if anybody would like to pick one up today.